Here is a very interesting thinking problem and it is probably the toughest of this question bank. Here use remainder theorem to find the remainder when x to the power of 4 minus 5x square plus x minus 1 is divided by x square minus 1. Note do not use long division or synthetic division. That means you got to use only remainder theorem to find the remainder. Well, you could not have used synthetic division here, right? Because you are dividing by a quadratic equation, right? x square minus 1. Synthetic division can only be used for linear divisors, right? Not quadratic. Or you could have done long division to find the remainder. Here we are restricted to use only remainder theorem. So we need to really think outside the box to get this answer. And we'll try to use our division statement to find the answer. Okay, that's kind of a hint to you. Now, what we will do is, since we know x square minus 1 is actually x plus 1 and x minus 1, so let's try to find the values of this function at x plus 1 and x minus 1. So that means, let's say what is f of 1 equals to. So we'll put 1 here and say 1 to the power of 4, 1. And then this is minus 5 plus 1 minus 1. That gives us 1 minus 5 is minus 4 and 1 this is 0. Okay. Let's also find what is f of minus 1 f of minus 1 is minus 1 to the power of 4 is plus and this is also plus so we get minus 5 here however we get minus 1 and then minus 1 right so f of minus 1 for us is this is minus 7 and 1 so minus 6 these are our values one more thing which you note here is that since we are dividing by x square minus 1 remainder can maximum be like a linear number right so let's assume that our remainder is ax plus b so we can write our f of x has we say f of x is equal to x square minus 1 I will factor x square minus 1 and write it as x plus 1 times x minus 1 we don't know what the quotient is so let's write quotient as q of x plus remainder also we don't know so let's write remainder as r of x okay now we know one thing since divisor is of degree 2 remainder should be linear so let us assume that our remainder is ax plus b so let's assume that and we'll find the remainder plus ax plus b that's our remainder in general right now we know f of 1 Let's try. What is f of 1 for us? 1 means we'll put 1 here. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So first term will be 0. And we are left with a 1 is 1 and b. So we are left with a plus b, right? This is when x is 1. Since x equals to 1, a times 1 will be 1. Okay. Now what is f of minus 1 equals to? Let's call this as our equation 1, okay? I'm calling this as equation 1. Minus 1. If I put minus 1 here, then I get this is 0, and so I get minus a plus b. Is that okay? Minus a plus b. Okay? Fortunately, we know what f1 and f of minus 1 is. There they are, right? Now, if I add them up, then I can cancel out A and find B, which is these two added up, correct? Let me call this 2. And if I subtract them, then I get the value of A's. Do you see that? That's how I get my A's. And once I get my A and B, I know what my remainder is. Do you see the strategy? 
that is how it is so let's do it again right so I'm rewriting these equations f of 1 is minus 4 right so I'm writing here minus 4 equals to a plus b and f of minus 1 is minus 6 so I'm writing minus 6 equals to minus a plus b right and what I will do is I will add them so if I add them then I get minus 10 equals to 2b right or I can say b is equals to minus 5 right let me do this again and this time I'll subtract them okay so I'll write minus 4 equals to a plus b minus 6 equals to minus a plus b right and this time I will subtract them I could have placed value of b there and found a yes when I subtract them I get 2 here right this minus this and this will give me 2a right that means a equals to 1 correct so I get my a and b and therefore because I know my a and b now I say remainder r of x is equals to ax which is 1 right so just x and b is minus 5 x minus 5 so that's my remainder do you see that that's my remainder try to understand the whole process of doing it so the process is that first we are dividing by a quadratic divisor we factor that out x plus 1 times x minus 1 and then we write our division statement that's our division statement right so f of x equals to divisor times quotient plus remainder right now you see if I put minus 1 here this term is 0 if I put plus 1 this term is 0 so in both these cases I get two different equations with which I can solve for two variables and that's the strategy used it is one of the most beautiful questions which you'll come across on this topic and I hope you enjoyed the process as much as I did while solving it. Thank you.